Hello and welcome to JHEB's lesson on reactions of area suitable for these two examples. So as you can see over here we've got this molecule, this aromatic compound of benzene, lovely benzene because you'll be learning about it in all the module one, for OCR anyway. If you want to know more about benzene, which you kind of do have to, you should definitely check out my benzene video. So, if we substituted chlorine into this benzene, we would end up naming it chlorobenzene. Okay, because we added chlorine onto benzene, benzene is the root word, and that is always usually the last thing you write. Usually, usually. That's a general rule. So, let's say, for example, I change this to bromine, that will end up as bromobenzene. If I ended up with, uh, I don't know, fluorine, that will end up with fluorobenzene. So what about if I, if I did this? This technically is dibromobenzene, but we need to know the positions of the bromine in order technically to replicate it if we want to do that in laboratory and so on and so forth. So, what we need to do, we need to number the carbon atoms which are situated on each intersection and the numbers, the positions, need to be as near to zero as possible. So let's count this way because this, if we go through this route, we can see that it's shorter to get from this bromine to this bromine going here than it is by going all the way around here. So let's number it like this. Three, four, five, six. We can see that this is one, three, dibromo benzene. Keep on practicing that if you kind of get it, but yeah, keep on practicing it. So, how does this actually happen? This undergoes a, a, an, an electrophilic substitution. I'm so used to say nucleophilic substitution, electrophilic substitution. And what happens is that we've got the electrophile, which is deficient in electrons. Obviously, that's why it's called an electrophile. File means like, like, uh, yeah, like a couple of the words. <laughs> so what happens is that the electrophile is obviously naturally attracted to the electron rich ring over here. And electrons are transferred from this benzene ring to the electrophile. Obviously the electrophile, I've just made the El+, plus, but the electrophiles could be bromine, chlorine, whatever plus. That's just a general way of writing it. So we've transferred an electron over here and we've formed a covalent bond with it. Okay, so we ended up like this. But uh-oh, what's happened? Seeing as we donated an electron, the benzene ring is kind of like broken. And that's a bad thing because benzene is very, very stable. And so it fights to get back the stability it so happens. That's why it usually doesn't do addition reactions because it would fight to get back to that stability that it so craves. And what happens is that it kicks this hydrogen out, okay? A bit like Big Brother, kicks it out and it takes the electrons from it. So this would end up as a H plus because it's deficient in an electron now because it's gone back to the benzene ring and therefore we have, end up, we have ended up with electro, yeah, electrophil benzene, if that made sense. So for example, if that was chlorine, as we discussed before, it would be chlorobenzene. And that is all for electrophilic substitution. But benzene can't split up halogens. As you can see over here, this, elect this electrophile was already being split up. You wouldn't find bromine plus. You wouldn't find bromine ions and chlorine ions just like sitting there because they come as diatomic molecules. Most things on everything on Group 7 is a diatomic molecule. So, what happens? We need a halogen carrier. As you probably noticed, if when we have when we de when we 
add bromine to an alkene, we separate the bonds and we have we make it into an alkane. And as you can see here, we've got the transfer of electrons to this bromine, and then the transfer of electrons to that bromine, and it splits up by heterolytic fission. But the thing about benzene is that it's got alternating double bonds. It goes through an equilibrium between one set of double bonds and the other set of double bonds. So it's very, very difficult for this to happen. It's very, very difficult for this heterolytic fission to happen. So what we use instead is a halogen carrier. Okay, and halogen carriers are catalysts. They speed up the rate of reaction and we've got two very good halogen carriers here we've got an aluminium um, whatever you want to substitute it with and iron 3 plus whatever we want to fill it with so say for example if we want to split up bromine we would use ALBR and or or if you want you can use FEBR Three, okay. This is just basically a general formula as I like to use. So we've got bromine over here and we reacted it with FeBr3. Even though it's in an equilibrium uh, and it can go through the reverse reaction, we end up with a bromine ion and FeBr4 minus. And we don't really care about this anymore because we've got what we needed and obviously the bromine is attracted to the uh, to the electron rich ring and then transfer of electrons and then we end up with bromobenzene. So another thing that happens is that we use we nitrate we nitrate benzene. That's what I wanted to say. I don't know why that didn't come out. So we have sulfuric acid and nitric acid to make N2NO3 plus and HSO4 minus. As you know, as you probably noticed, these two are both acids, but so you'd be wondering which one gives off the protons if you've done F325. This is kind of F325. But sulfuric acid has a lower dissociation constants well then the, um, the 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 minus logarithm of the dissociation constant than nitric acid obviously don't worry about this if you haven't come across it before that is definitely an F325 but I learned it I learned that first before I did F324 so therefore I'm using I'm just incorporating it so this will lose the proton because remember Acids are proton donors, so this is an acid, and this would be the conjugate base. Conjugate base, and so would this be the base, and that would be the conjugate acid. And so we'd end up with N2NO3+. Remember, the end goal, we want NO2+. Sorry, I didn't tell you that, but that's our end goal. That's what we want. So... We've reacted these two acids together to make this and this. And H2NO3 loses a molecule of water quite conveniently. And it ends up with a nitrile cation, which is this. And obviously then this will be attracted to the electron-rich benzene ring and then the transfer of electrons. And overall, we have benzene plus nitric acid, which is over here, to make be, um, uh, what's it? Nitrobenzene plus the H plus. But then don't forget we have an OH to make H two O. And that is it for this lesson. Oh, and if you didn't get that. Um, if you just have a look at, uh, if you just have a look at this, we have, we, NO2 comes from it, right? And obviously it goes there. What's left is a OH, and we've got a H+, which has been ejected from the benzene to make H2O. Sorry, I didn't explain that properly, but yeah, there you go.